Hi there, this is Tammy with Tammy Something Therapy. Today I'm coming on with what I consider a really basic stamping video. Um, I'm going back to the big, the basics. And this isn't the very beginning, because if I was at the very beginning, I would teach you a bunch of stuff before you ever had a stamp in your hand. Um, but I'm starting here with basic stamping. Uh, different kinds of stamps. And how to use them, and how to do very basic stamping. So if you want to make a card, what do you need? You need three things. You need ink, you need paper, and you need stamps. By paper, I mean cardstock. Um, some people make cards with paper. I make them with cardstock. I want them to be substantial. If you want to get started without spending a lot of money and you just want to get your feet wet, um, one of the ways to start is by purchasing a set of cards and envelopes that come together. There's no cutting involved. This package here has uh, 20 note cards and envelopes in it. The note cards are three and a half by five and they come like this. So they're already scored. The first thing that I would do for these is fold them and burnish. And um, let me add a disclaimer here. This is all my opinion. It's not the law or the way you absolutely have to do anything and someone else might tell you they do it a totally different way. And that's okay because it's all subjective. Is that the word I'm looking for? Everybody has their own ideas. Everybody has different experiences. I have um, 40 plus years of crafting experience and 20 some years of paper crafting experience. And that's what I'm speaking from. I can't speak from any, anyone else's experiences. Um, so these cards are already scored. And you can tell by looking that the score line has a valley, which is a, when you score, you make a line in the card. And on the other side of that is what's called a mountain. What I do when it comes to folding is I always fold into the mountain. And the reason for that is that, in my opinion, it stops the side of the car it stops the fold from uh, cracking I've tried it both ways and this is the way I prefer so I have these two little note cards and I've already done some samples and I'm but I'm going to show you how to do some stuff um, first thing is stamps there's red rubber stamps this is a red rubber stamp it has uh, it's made out of red rubber obviously and it's got a cushion like a that's more than an eighth, maybe a three sixteenth inch cushion on it. These stamps, and I should have cleaned this before I started this. Um, let me find one that's not on the block because I'm going to get my fingers all messed up. And I'm working with a white card, so I don't want my white card to have my fingerprints on it. Um, I get most of my stamps from Stampin' Up. I'm a Stampin' Up demonstrator. And if you buy our red rubber stamps, they come in a case like this, and they're called Clear Mount. Actually, now they're called Cling Mount. This is previous. They've changed it a little bit. Um, they come with labels that you can put on the stamps. I don't put the labels on the stamps, and I can explain that in a different video. That's kind of a controversial thing also. But they come like this, and without the label on, they stick nicely inside the case. And then you need blocks to put them on. The other option for stamps, as far as Stampin' Up! is concerned, is called photopolymer. They're clear. Many companies make clear stamps. Some of them are acrylic. Some of them are photopolymer. Some of them are I don't know what. But this is it. This is a, a photopolymer stamp. And these, you'll see this stamp doesn't have any cushion. These stamps have cushion. This doesn't have any cushion. Um, there's pros and cons to both kinds of stamps. When I'm buying from Stampin' Up, I don't have a choice. Sometimes they come one way, sometimes they come the other way. There's reasons for that. Um, my preference has always been rubber stamps because I like the way they feel and I like the way they stamp. One huge advantage to these kinds of stamps is you can see through them. And you'll see that when I stamp the card I'm going to do with this, that it's helpful to be able to see through them. Um, it's also helpful for some techniques that you'll learn in later videos, different kinds of stamping. 
So I'm going to start with, which one am I starting with? I'm going to start with this photopolymer. Um, Because there's no cushion under it, photopolymer sometimes stamps well on a flat surface and sometimes it needs a cushion. And I didn't bring one of my foam pads, which is not good. I should have, although they're stamping pretty well. I've been stamping today and it's stamping pretty well. But you can use something, anything with cush. So I could stamp onto this, a magazine or some kind of a book that is not totally hard. Um, this stamp, though, stamped really well, so I'm going to show you how I did this flower. I chose this flower because I want to show you how a solid stamp works. I'm sure I'm going all out of order here. Um, it's been a while since I've gone way back to the basics. But I wanted to show you a solid stamp versus a line stamp. So a solid stamp, you're picking up ink on the whole stamp. A line stamp, you're only picking up the lines, and then what do you do with it after that? So for this card, I'm using this stamp. For the line stamp card, I'm using a different stamp set. This is my stamp, and you'll notice that it is pink. It's not pink because I used red ink. Um, there's something about photopolymer that the very first time you use it, it picks up color, and it always ends up being a pink color. Even if I used it on blue, after I clean this stamp, it would still have a pink tinge to it. And it doesn't affect the way it stamps or anything about it. It still works. You can still see through it. And it works great. Um, so I'm going to start by stamping this. The next thing to know about stamping, this is an ink pad. This is a dye-based ink pad. Inks are a whole other class in themselves. I think I've already got ink on my fingers. Uh, this is real red dye-based ink pad. These ink pads from Stampin' Up! are a sponge pad, the dye-based ink pads, so they're cushy. When you're inking up your stamp, is that in the video? no matter what kind of ink pad or stamp you're using, when you're inking up your stamp, you want to tap lightly. You don't need to push down in and gush. It, it gets ink everywhere you don't want it. If you push down in there, Ink would go up in those cracks, it would go all over the block, it would go everywhere. You just need to tap lightly. If you have a well-inked ink pad and they hold their ink very well, that's all you do. Tap, tap lightly and then I'm going to stamp it. And you're going to go straight down. Hold it for a few seconds with firm, even pressure. You're not rocking at all. You're not pushing hard. You're just holding it there and then I'm going to pull it away. So that was pretty simple. That's real red. Stamped very nice. Um, and then this, this flower has a center. And what I'm using for my center is Mango Melody. You can see this one is starting to get spots where I'm going to need to re-ink it soon. So I have to be careful where I put my stamp on this one. So I have this tiny, tiny little stamp that goes in the center. I'm going to be sure I get a well-inked part. I don't know if you can see on this stamp, it's a shape that matches this, this opening right here. So when I stamp it, I want to try to get it in the opening. And this is going to be hard to do without having my head in there. Oh, that's pretty good. See, I got right in the middle. And then to go with this, I'm going to use old olive ink, and this time it's a line stamp. Here it is. These are the leaves that I'm going to use. And again, the nice thing is that you can see through it, so when I did this, I could see the shape of where I was putting it. And this I'm going to put, where do I want this? I'm going to put this right here. So there's that part. And then the last thing to add to this card is the word, and I'm going to use black. Um, 
I love the Memento Tuxedo Black ink for almost any time I'm stamping black. It stamps very nice. It's also good for coloring because I, I can color with whatever I want. I can color with um, alcohol markers or regular markers, watercolor stuff. The black ink will not bleed if you use this ink. Other inks may bleed. There's others. There's lots of different brands out there and lots of different kinds and they may or may not bleed. Let me show you this ink pad before I go any farther. This is a linen ink pad. So it's not foam like the, the other ones are, and it's a different type of ink. And so for this one, um, depending on my stamp, sometimes I'll do this a little bit because I want to be sure it gets stamped well, mostly if I'm using a more solid image. But still, you're just going to tap lightly on the ink pad and then stamp, hold for a few seconds. Nice thing is I can see if it's straight or not. If I'm using red rubber, I can't see if it's straight. And sometimes even though I can see if it's straight, it's not straight because my eyes are apparently crooked. I don't know. So um, this is a very pretty card, just like this. For basic stamping, we use well, we used four colors of ink, but you could have done it with one or two colors. These words, you didn't have to have black. You could have used your green, the red, or the yellow for the words. Although all of these stamps came in the stamp set. Um, and that, that could be your card. It's a very basic card. It's just one card. And then I always, I had this stamp made for me. I always stamped the back of my cards. It's going to be crooked, I'm sure. Oh, not too bad. So it's created by Tammy. And sometimes I'll put my initials in the year, but, um, and then there's envelopes that match this. And I have already stamped an envelope. I, I try to always stamp my envelopes. There's way more I would do. Like I said, I've been stamping for 20 some years. There is way more I would do. Um, but it is a very, it's a very pretty card just the way it is. And this is the smallest card you can actually put postage on and mail it. It's three and a half by five. Any smaller than that, the post office won't accept. So if I wanted to dress this up a little bit, this particular card, here's what I would do. I Well, you can see I added a bow. I almost have bows on my cards. I don't make cards. When I'm just stamping to create cards or for the classes that I do, my cards always have layers. They never look like this, but this is really pretty. It's just not my personality, but it is, it is very pretty. So I add, well, this one's very pretty and there's nothing wrong with this card. It just, to me, isn't enough there. I know I'm weird. So the first thing I did to this is I took my Wink Estella pen. This adds a little bit of glitter. I colored in I don't know if you can see this or not, but I colored in the leaves with the Wink Estella. And if you do it right after you stamp, which I didn't get there soon enough, the Wink Estella will, because this is a dye-based ink, which can bleed, you can get the Wink Estella to pull the um, color in a little bit. That one didn't do it. but And then I used Wink Estella on the center right there. This is our white seam binding ribbon, which this ribbon is very nice because I can color it with my alcohol markers or my regular markers or my re-inkers. For this card, I wanted it to be white because I didn't want it to be too overpowering. So that is that one. And then the other card I'm going to show you. There's my sample for me. Okay. So for this one, I put away these inks. Someday I'll do a stamp room storage and show you my cool, the way my stuff is stored, because it's pretty cool. So for this one, I want Granny Apple Green, and I want Highland Heather, and I still want black. Granny Apple Green, I'm using, I'm trying to find my stamp set. Okay. I'm using this stamp set that's called Positive Thoughts. It has all these different elements in it. I'm only using two of the elements and then the words. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do. Oh, something I did not mention on the previous card. Um, whenever I'm stamping, which I've been stamping with these so I know how they stamp. But I never remember how a stamp will stamp. So the first thing I do is ink it up. You can see I'm just tapping lightly on there. And I'm going to stamp it on my scrap paper. Because I want to see how it's going to stamp. This one I know stamps well because I've done it before. So I'm going to stamp this on here. And I stamped off the side. I don't, don't want the whole thing on there. I just want part of it. So I stamped off. I didn't get the beginning of the stem on there. While I have this open, I'm going to, oops, going to Oh, see, I already got stuff on the back of this. I don't know how I got that on there. I must already have, I always, usually have ink all over my fingers. That's just the way I roll. I'm always inky. And then I'm going to stamp. This butterfly again just slightly tap how does it stamp stamps very nicely I'm gonna put it right there and then I'm gonna stamp my word so you can't oh, see I already did something wrong did not want that I know I should never have multiple ink pads open because I will always put my stamp in the wrong pad. At least I didn't foul it because this stamp was clean. Uh, so I'm going to put this right. Sorry for my head. I want to see where it goes. I think I'm crooked. Well, not crooked. Almost off the bottom. but um, So that that's the card as is. And this again is very, very pretty. I stamped the envelope. And those will go together. Um, and then to, to, I really, oh, I want to show you something with that. I won't close it yet. Um, to step this one up, I stamped this butterfly again on white cardstock. I looked him up. And then I cut it out. Um, this is something funny about terminology. I wonder where some of these terms come from because when I learned to stamp, if I cut something out, I was cutting it out. Now if I cut something out, I have to say I'm fussy cutting it. Not sure where that term came from. It wasn't there at the beginning. It came somewhere along the line. Anyway, I fussy cut this butterfly and I put gems in the middle and I glued him down and just lift up his wings a little bit and then it makes the card look way different. Looks a lot different. This one I'm going to at the very least have to put some gems on before I can use it because it looks too bare to me. It just gave me an idea. Stay to the end of the video for a surprise. I have some other cards to show you that are on the, along the same line, but I want to show you. Um, can you see how just inking this up, which I did very lightly, I still got ink on the edges of the stamp. I don't have it all over my block, but I have it on the edges of my stamp. So if I were to stamp and then rock, which I see people do, they go like this. Look at the marks that you get. See those like shadow marks or there's a word for them. I don't know what it's called. But as long as you're, I can get this really inky. This is the way, I have some customers in some of my classes. This is what they do. And then their whole block is colored. They have ink everywhere. So this is what they do. And then they go like this. Look what they've done. I can get this whole thing. I can do what they do. I don't want to. But good. It uses way too much ink. And it's not good for my ink pad, but I'm going to make a point here. So you saw what I did. I can still just go like this. Hold it for a few seconds. Let go. I have a perfect image. 
I don't have any shadowing. I didn't get any of that other ink anywhere. Um, the reason you're holding it for a few seconds is it's allowing the paper to grab a hold of the ink. And it, um, some inks and some stamps, you can just go like that and it's done and it's good. Sometimes, especially if it's a more bold stamp, like the first one we did, like this one, there's a lot more ink there you need to transfer, so it takes a little bit longer. Sorry, that's upside down. It takes a little bit longer. Um, let me see if I have, I wrote some notes. Let me see if I've missed anything. There's a bunch of stuff that I wrote down that is not for beginning stamping, so I don't need to um, tell you any of that stuff yet. So paper, inks, and stamps, different types of stamps. Solid image versus aligned image. You should always have a good flat surface and sometimes a pad. Um, I love my glass mat. I have this one, which is Crafter's Companion, and I have both Tim Holtz mats. I know, excessive. I like this one because it's white. When I used the Tim Holtz one, the black, I didn't like that I couldn't see. Like if I get something on here, I couldn't see the black, it on the black one. But And I had to have this because it was purple. So there you go. Um, I'm going to start a video series where I think I'm going to do it weekly. We'll see. It's going to be one card three ways. And I've showed you here one card two ways where, let me find them. This is way one and this is way two where I stepped it up a little bit. Um, but I'll be doing more of that. So if you take this card, this is the first one. This is the second one. These cards are both beautiful. However, I did say this isn't the way I stamp. Oh, I can close this. Now I'm going to, I don't want this purple ink on stuff that it doesn't belong on. Move that too. I'm going to move all these. I don't want any of this on the back of my cards. And I do still have some other cards I'm going to show you, but. There is way number one with this stamp set, and there is way number two. Now let me show you. This is the way I make cards. There's layering. This piece is die cut. I totally forgot. This stamp has a die. This stamp set has matching dies. I didn't have to fussy cut that, but if you just want to start with stamps, inks, and paper, this butterfly is easy to cut out. But it does have a die that cuts out that and that and these little pieces. Um, you can see how much more I do when I make cards. I layer up the inside. I always stamp the inside. I always do something with my envelope. Here's the envelope for this one. It's kind of funny because years ago, my sister, she's a stamper also, one of my sisters, she used to stamp her envelopes. And I'd look at that and go, that is just so silly. They're going to rip it open and throw it away. But when you get this in the mail, isn't this fun that this comes in the mail and it's this fun, fun envelope that you already know it's a birthday card. It says birthday wishes or it just has a fun design on it. It makes that piece of mail so much more exciting before you even open it. So now I always stamp my envelopes. I have always finished the insides of my cards. Um, this to me is a bare naked card. It's nice for a note card. Like if I just wanted to write, well, I'd have to be careful writing because of that right there. If I was going to start up here and write. Um, write a note to a friend. It's good for that. This one doesn't have a lot of room here for writing, and it's kind of hard to write up here because this is a very dimensional card. You can see all the layers I have on there. Um, for this one, I would include another piece of paper, probably, if I was going to write very much. And then I, I always add ribbon, so my cards almost always have a bow or ribbon of some sort. They almost always have die cutting or something that's been dry embossed to add texture because those are the things that I love. I absolutely love them. So let me show you a couple more cards. I can find them. Okay, here they are. So we have this stamp set called Wildly Happy. It's kind of funny. This came out in last year's catalog and I didn't realize I hadn't used it yet until I opened it. It was still brand new inside. 
very fun stamp set. I had to have it because I love elephants, but it's also a good set to make baby cards with. So here is version one. I stamped the elephants in basic gray ink and I stamped the sentiment in the same black ink that I've been using and it's blank on the inside. I haven't stamped the back. I did the envelope. The stepped up version of this one still staying with the note cards without going to bigger cards and needing more supplies is this uh actually you do need more supplies what i did with this one is i colored it with smoky slate uh stamp and blends alcohol markers with the light and the dark that's what i did to make this one different so that is that and then we have I love this set and I've only used it once I think called dandelion wishes I just love these flowers it has says sending well wishes your way wishes for a lifetime of love and happiness I made a wish and you came true I really like that so I made this card I used gorgeous grape and the black ink and that's the card it's a very nice note card you just want to write a note it's very nice this is the envelope and the way I stepped this up just a little bit is I added rhinestones to the centers of the flowers. It makes a big difference, I think. I feel like this one's unfinished and this one's finished. But for many people, this one is finished. And for me, this one isn't enough. This would be this right here. I would layer on color and put on a bigger card, most likely. So here's the four different cards that I made. Here, here is this one, Dandelion Wishes, Wildly Happy, I can't remember what this one's called, oh. Positive Thoughts, these two, and I got too much stuff. Floral Essence. Aren't these fun? So I hope that this taught you a few things. Like I said, I am not, I do not know everything. This is all just my opinion. Um, but I'm hoping there were some tidbits of things in there you might not have already known. And in future videos, it's kind of funny because I... The videos that I've done since last August when I started posting videos again, I've done very few cards. I really love to make 3D items, like the boxes and stuff that I've made. I didn't make this one, but I like to make stuff like this. Suzanne made this for me for my challenge. This thing's cool. She made the beads, she made the tassels. She has a video today, yesterday, showing the tassels. Those are the kinds of things, things that I love to make, but I need cards and I like to give cards to people. I like to send cards to people. Um, I have a little book that I made years ago, and I don't think I can reach it. I can't reach it from here. Um, a birthday book that I put everybody's birthday in, and I send birthday cards. If I don't have your birthday, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, I would love to send you a birthday card. Of course, I would also need your address. So I'll put my email address in the description box below. And you can email me your address and your birth date. And I would love to send you a birthday card. So my surprise for the end is um, there are eight cards here that I made. There's eight. No, there's nine. Nine. I feel like there's three no duh stop it okay so there's these three cards because I already had two samples and then I made another one of this there's three of these and there's two of each of these so six eight ten there's ten cards here sorry apparently I can't count um, so I am going to give these away to somebody this video is posting Saturday morning, May 30th, and I will draw a name on Sunday afternoon. 
just because it's really hard for me to do this kind of stuff during the week. I want to get it done over the weekend. So Sunday afternoon, I will draw a name and I will send you these cards. So what do you have to do to win? In the comments below, um, tell me what, what you thought of these cards and are they too basic or I don't know. And hey, did you learn anything from, from what I did? And just say, enter me. I would love to have those cards. Something like that so that I know you want to be entered. If you don't, if your comment just says, those are beautiful cards, well, that doesn't tell me you want them, so I won't put you in the drawing. But if your comment says, please enter me, or I would love to have those cards, then those are the names that will go into a drawing. And Sunday afternoon, I'm not sure what time, it depends on how my day goes, I will draw and I will send these out to somebody. So thank you very much for watching. This is my very first of the stamping, I think I'm going to call it Stamping 101 for the card making. We'll see. That's what I'm going to call this one. And thank you for watching. I hope everyone has a fabulous weekend and I'll see you on the next video.